Connection. I'm Mira Rubin here with you on Enlightened World Network. And today's topic is obstacle to opportunity. In a moment of crisis, we are overtaken by shock and often despair and fear and all a whole spectrum of emotions. And uh, once those initial emotions have been addressed, what if we could transform that obstacle, that crisis, to an opportunity, to, to new possibilities? And that's what we're going to talk about today. It opens up an op opportunity for a greater expression and experience of life in service to us and us in service to life. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Good morning. Good morning, Rosalind. Good morning. Good morning, Dido. So wonderful to have you here with us this morning. And welcome to everybody else who's joining us. Uh, before we get started, let's take a couple minutes to get present. So let's take a deep breath in through your nose and hold it. And imagine clean, crisp oxygen flooding your lungs, flowing into your bloodstream, nourishing all your cells, all your organs, bringing vital life energy to your body and being. And as you exhale, exhale any tension, stress, negativity, fatigue. And now let's take another deep breath in through your nose and hold it. This time, imagine brilliant bright light lighting you up from the inside out, illuminating, electrifying, and energizing all your cells, all your molecules, all your electrons, creating a brilliant beam of light and energy from your heart out into the world. And as you exhale, exhale any remaining tension, stress, negativity, fatigue. And now let's press our palms together, vigorously rub your hands together to feel the friction, the temperature, the pressure, the motion, the tickling and tingling when you stop and allow all those sensations to bring you present right here, right now into this remarkable physical form that enables you to experience life. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So today we're talking about obstacle to opportunity. And uh, this also is a conversation about curating our conversation, curating our interior dialogue, curating our story. So being very alert to the meaning that we assign to the experiences of our lives. Uh, the, so something bad happens, many of us might spiral into a conversation about nothing ever goes right for me, what's wrong with me, how could I have done such a stupid thing, uh, what, you know, on and on, right? Uh, nobody likes me, everybody hates me, I'm going to go eat worms kind of thing. And we, we get to be conscious. We get to be conscious of the stories that we tell ourselves. We get to be conscious of our inner uh, monologue and to be responsible for it rather than getting just sucked into it and absorbed by it. And once, once we become aware of it, once we can see it, once we can recognize it, then we have the opportunity to transform it. And that's, it, it takes that kind of awareness and will to be able to transform opposition or obstacle to opportunity. So if we are operating from the premise, and I invite you to try it, that life is happening for us and through us, 
rather than to us, then if life is unfolding to favor us, even the things that look like horrible crises have within them an opportunity. So we're not talking about spiritual bypassing here. We're not talking about being Pollyanna. Uh, we, when, when a crisis occurs, when an upset occurs, we want to be able to process what's going on emotionally, physically, to be respectful of it, to notice it. And we can notice it with curiosity and compassion to notice, wow, I really overreacted in that situation. What was going on? You know, what, what was triggered? What would I have to be thinking to respond that way? And what's the wound that perhaps I can heal that has been exposed in that interaction? So we get to that's also, by the way, turning obstacle to opportunity because we're looking to use that moment as an opportunity to heal. One of the things that I say in my practice with the core connection work is it, if it's coming up, it's coming up to heal. It's giving us an opportunity. We may not always utilize that opportunity. We may get sucked into the vortex of that negativity or that um, pattern of past programming and behavior. But each time those things arise, it gives us an opportunity to approach it in a different way, to utilize that occurrence as an opportunity for deeper understanding, greater growth, greater awakening. So again, we're not talking about bypassing the feelings. We're looking at processing those and recognizing those and not just falling into believing that that's how things are, but to take the opportunity to explore more deeply. So engaging curiosity, engaging compassion. And as we do that, oftentimes what looks like a really bad situation can be a catalyst for something really powerfully good. And I'm reminded of many instances, but one particular with uh, a client who was was in the midst of this really awfully fraught uh, conflict with, with people in the workplace who were essentially were accusing them of, of all kinds of things that they didn't do and it was very, very, very ugly politically and threatened their livelihood and and certainly their position and their good name. And, and it was a situation that could have been completely devastating. And processing through those, those feelings and and um, the dynamics, what arose or what was exposed was their deep desire to pursue this other lifestyle that they had been dreaming of for a long time that they were forestalling until after they retired. So they gave themselves out of this dramatic upset, they gave themselves permission, not running away from, but to move toward some their deepest dream. They gave themselves permission to go and live into their dream rather than uh, 
fight through this the, all these very very intense obstacles it gave them and it gave them the um I'm thinking velocity, whatever the the motivation to be able to change course to a course that was in greater alignment with him on all levels. And so it took something that extreme to make them change course because they would have, had it been any less extreme, they would have done everything they could have done to make it work. And so they really needed to be pried out of that position in order to follow their dream. So there was the um, obstacle, huge obstacle, that they were able to transform into a magnificent opportunity. And similarly, maybe not as extreme a situation where... Um, where there were some family disruptions for another client that required their um, attentions to another family member. And rather than having this be a crisis, they were able to transform it to an opportunity to give this other family member deep nurturance and recognition that this other person so desperately needed. And so the obstacle or, or the upset, it was still an upset, but there was the opportunity to utilize it to create something really powerfully positive. And I think that we we are subject to many opportunities like this in our lives and maybe we create them maybe life creates them for us in service to us but oftentimes we need extreme circumstances to create change to generate change to be willing to step out of our, our um, mainline type channel that we walk through life in. And just like roads get rutted when many wheels go on the same track, that happens to us in our lives where we get in a rut. We have that phrase even to talk about how we get in a rut and it takes some energy to be able to mobilize outside of that well-worn path it takes courage it takes courage or it takes nothing left to lose sometimes right it takes sometimes it really takes crisis to pry us out and we can make our lives so much easier if we listen more closely and we respond to those whispers maybe at first they're whispers maybe they're really loud calls that we choose to ignore but if we respond to those promptings early, then the, the whispers don't have to become hammers hitting us on the head to say, hey, now or never you know, or now you have no choice or to make it look like no choice. What if we, we attend to those whispers of the soul, I'm going to call them, early 
then we don't have to create as much drama. We don't have to bring things to such an extreme before we take heed. So um, it reminds me of how so many of us just push ourselves and push ourselves and push ourselves. And we don't listen to our body's calls for rest and, you know, saying, I, I need to take a break. We might even hear ourselves saying, boy, I really need a break. And yet we don't make the time or the space to give us the self-care that we so desperately need. And what happens then is we may literally get a break, like break something so that we have to stop or we'll get really sick so that we have to stop because we weren't paying attention or we refused to honor those communications from ourselves. And <laughs> Dido says, true that, <laughs> true that. <laughs> exactly. It's, it is true. And this is something I learned because I, I used to push myself to the point where I would just end up in bed for, you know, just sick as a dog for who knows how long where I couldn't get up and do anything. And so now when I'm tired, I stay in bed. What, you know, like on the weekend or whatever, I, I will just spend a day in bed without having to have a fever. And it may sound self-indulgent, but in my experience, that day saves me a week, perhaps, maybe more. And by honoring that, honoring our bodies, honoring our need for rest, we can avoid the drama, right, of getting really sick or ending up in the hospital or breaking something and that, that requires that we slow down, right? We can avoid the drama if we listen. If we listen early, then we often don't have to have this high drama that we have. And the other thing is that when that high drama occurs, and it may, um, we get to move through the feelings, experience the emotions, curate our story so that we're not saying, you know, I'm doomed, I'm never going to make it, all those awful uh, self-defeating kinds of things that we say to ourselves. If you notice yourself saying it, then you can notice that with compassion and curiosity rather than making it wrong, just notice and look for what needs healing and then look for the opportunity because the likelihood is that the opportunity presented itself prior to the crisis that you probably had many many messages encouraging whatever the opportunity behavior is before the crisis occurred. And my experience anyway, personally, and it may or may not be the case for you to check in, but my experience is that at first I'll be told really quietly and then it gets louder and louder until it's undeniable. And because the consequences were so extreme for me so often, I have learned to listen a lot more, a lot more quickly. Maybe not all the time, but a lot more and a lot more quickly. And um, life is much less drama filled, which is a wonderful thing. And the other thing is when when things don't go our way, typically we will engage in this dialogue of why me or beyond, right? And 
what if we look at, well, that didn't go the way that I thought I wanted it to go. And if life is serving me, if life is happening for me and through me, then maybe there's something here that is better. Maybe there is a better opportunity here in this direction. I just got redirected. You know, rather than making our obstacles ever bigger, rather than amplifying them, why not receive them as, as not personal, but, but for our, not as a personal slight, but for our growth, um, like for our benefit in not, in not a Pollyanna way, but for real. I remember years ago, I was, I was struggling and I remember going through the drama of my life saying over and over and over again, everything is perfect for my growth. Everything is perfect for my growth, trying to convince myself that that was true. And I sure did not believe it. And so there's a different way of being, I guess, not just saying those words, but connecting to if everything is, if life is serving me, what is the gift? What is the opportunity to, to be inquiring, to be looking at that rather than trying to push our way through doing the same thing, saying it's perfect for my growth, which is what I think I used to do is just keep pushing through stuck in stuck in whatever rut I was in, channeled in, and still going barreling down that path saying everything is per perfect for my growth rather than getting the message of, hey, maybe you want to look at this differently. Maybe you want to behave a little differently in this circumstance. So Rosalind says, allow what is there. Can you expand on what bypassing is? First of all, allow what is there. That's exactly what we're looking at, Rosalind, is to be with what's present. Exactly. Bypassing, bypassing is being in a crisis and in the midst of the crisis saying, um, everything is perfect for my growth, or I know that this is, um, this is a gift without processing the emotions. It's like trying to convert, it's, it's kind of a denial, a denial of the response, a denial of what's actually going on, a denial of what is there is bypassing. So if I'm feeling grief and shame and upset and, and um, feeling singled out or whatever it is, bypassing is <clears throat> ignoring that and just saying, okay, I'm just going to be loving. Well, the thing is, we, we get to recognize what's happening to ourselves or in ourselves and to move through that, to recognize that, to be with what's there in order to get to the point where we can truly authentically experience connection and love and appreciation and gratitude again. Bypassing is not going through doing the work with the ugly or the upset because we, we get to do that, that's important. That's a fundamental piece of being able to truly authentically move into a space of lighter emotion and lighter presence. We don't get to pretend that the anger doesn't exist. It's like I might, if bypassing is I'm really angry at something somebody did, and then I'm just like, no, I'm just going to be loving. I'm just going to be loving. I'm not, I'm not moving through i'm not transmuting what was there i'm kind of just pressing it down and trying to put a pretty paint paint over it 
and um, we want we want to be living our human experience as fully as possible. And a big part of that human experience is all these emotional states that we get. And there's there is learning available to us as we are present to those emotions, as we are present to the dynamics that generate them. Um, when we have an upset, we get to look at, well, what's going on there? What would I have what would I have to be thinking in order to be reacting this way? What's going on? And and to then identify places that need attending to within ourselves, within our our thinking, within our emotion. You know, there's parts of us crying out to be loved and and um healed and cherished and held. And so we get to address that in a conscious way. Like I said, if it's coming up, it's coming up to heal. Like we have the opportunity to heal whatever it is. And to become more aware of our own dynamics, right? Rather than being drawn into, drawn down into a downward spiral, a vortex of, of, perpetuating old wounds. So thank you for that question. Anyway, that's it for today. And I'm Mira Rubin. This is The Core Connection. I go live here each weekday morning at 9 a.m. Eastern on the Enlightened World Network Facebook page and YouTube channel. And I invite you to check out the other awesome programming on Enlightened World Network and Enlightened World Living. And I also want to remind you that Monday, October 30th, is the day of peace. And <laughs> Russell says, have a good weekend in bed. <laughs> thank you. I, I don't know if I'll need to, but thank you. And thank you, Dido, and everybody else who's joining us. As always, it's such a privilege to spend this time with you. Um, so I was saying Monday is a day of peace for Enlightened World Network. Uh, we're going to be um, having the privilege of Ruth Anderson's company for Core Connection Monday morning. And I invite you all to make, make space for us all to collectively uh, heighten the energy that is promoting and propagating peace. So until then, so much love to you. <laughs>